guys, it's Lauren with Discover Double Bass. Now, as many of you know, I preach to the end of time about playing with curved fingers as opposed to collapsed. But today, I wanted to pose the question of whether it was ever okay to play with collapsed fingers. And the short answer to this is yes. The long answer is yes, but sometimes. So in this lesson, I'm gonna go over the different instances where you might play with collapsed fingers. Now in general, I encourage you to play with curved fingers the majority of the time. And I think it should be the foundation for your left hand technique. Overall, you're stronger when you play with curved fingers, which makes you faster, you're more accurate, and it's a healthier way to play. So you, in general, just have a lot more freedom when you play with curved fingers. But this is a video about breaking the rules, and I promised you that I'd give you some reasons that you could stray from that and play with collapsed fingers. Now the first instance where I might play with collapsed fingers is that the interval I'm playing literally prevents me from curving my fingers. So this happens a lot with thirds. If I'm up in thumb position and I'm playing say a third from A on top and F natural on bottom, so often I'm just unable to curve that index finger. For whatever reason, it's the angle or where I'm coming from or where I'm going, I just cannot curve that index finger. That happens also with weirder or bigger intervals, like say if I'm playing B flat with first finger and then I'm reaching over for the A on the D string. Something like that where I have this awkward reach here, I'm probably going to collapse the finger like this. And in this instance, if I tried to curve the finger, it would actually get in my way and I wouldn't be able to play it. So I can do it, but if I'm going quickly, if I'm coming from something, if I can't just sit there and prepare it, which I probably can't, then it's not gonna be accurate and I'm probably not gonna nail it. So in this case, it's kind of, a, impossible for me to avoid playing with collapsed fingers. So another reason is that I might be looking for a different sound vibrato. So my general go-to vibrato is a very intense, passionate sounding vibrato. It's faster, it's pretty wide, and so it's really intense. And I love it, but I also love experimenting with different sounds a vibrato. I love using vibrato as an expressive tool. So when you're playing with collapsed fingers, you play on the pads of your fingers. And generally, that's a downside of playing with collapsed fingers because it makes you less accurate because you cover more ground on the string. But one of the good things about playing with more flesh is that with the vibrato, you can get a meatier, wider sound. So it's just a lot heavier. And I can't quite emulate that with uh, curved finger vibrato. I sort of can, but there's just a little bit more depth in this collapsed finger vibrato. It's really nice down low too. So if I'm playing something really meaty and really passionate like Shostakovich, I might use this vibrato. moving back and forth and moving my fingers, I might have to work a little bit harder to be accurate, but the payoff is so good because of that expression. The other instance is barred fingerings. Barred fingerings are when you play two notes that are straight across from each other, like E on the G string to B on the D string. But you have to hold both notes down at the same time, either because they're um, a double stop or because you have to go quickly. And the way that you do that is you just flatten the finger across the two strings. And in that instance, of course, there's no way that you could possibly curve the fingers because you only cover so much ground with that tip of the finger. Now I still believe that playing with curved fingers is overall the best way to hold your hand. But like we talked about in this video, there are some instances where it's okay to stray from that foundational technique method, either out of necessity or out of yearning for a specific sound quality that you just can't get with curved fingers. 
So I hope that all of this made sense. If you have any questions, please leave a comment underneath the video and I'll answer you as soon as I possibly can. If you enjoyed this lesson and you'd like to learn more from me, please check out my full length course, All on Thumb Position, available exclusively on discoverdoublebase.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.